I'm going to get flamed for this episode. This is where we lose all credibility. Are we? For me. Why? Because I loved it. Oh, As a kid, like I, I, I literally listened to Secondhand Serenade while I read the books. You're so gross. Tonight will be the night that I will fall for you. And I'm sitting there like, Edward loves yeah. you. Choose Edward. Don't choose either of them. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Is This For Kids? I am Jonathan Beard of Blubbins. I am Katie, Mrs. Ruby. And we are about to get real emo with you today. Yeah. Well, I am. So emo. Throwback episode. Well, not a throwback episode. Maybe throwback a little bit. I think it's impacting topic. culture to this day. So You think Twilight is still relevant? Mm-hmm. Tell me why. Twilight. We're talking about Twilight. Books or movies? I don't even know. I've, I've read Both. them all and seen them all. Both. I mean, they're... the. Books are the movies are pretty true to the books. Sorry to sound so proud about that. Yeah, the movies are pretty true to the books, so I think you could probably. The books were much better, but I'm with you. Okay. (laughs) I mean, I mean, the whole thing is horrible. (laughs) I hated all of it. (laughs) You hate that you love it. I hated all of it. Did you read the books? Yeah, I did. How old were you when you? Do you remember? You you were like Uh, a little older than me. So so I read the first one. The I saw the movie first. I saw the first movie. The ooh mistake. So twenty two thousand and eight was the first time I saw the movie it was in theaters and then it was right after I had had my first daughter and then I read all three books that were out at that time uh, when that came out and then I read the fourth one as it came when the fourth book came out I read it was the fourth one the last one uh, yeah the fourth yeah. one was the last one and yeah. it came I think it came out pretty shortly after that maybe 2009 ish I cried at the end of the fourth book you're a dork <laughs> it was beautiful, it was uh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. so I, I was well i was probably in i was like 18 19 20 21 when this was all coming out i had also just read harry potter so in my mind like picture you have to understand y'all like before you judge me okay i was like varsity soccer three years you know like had friends had a good life but i was in my emo phase mm-hmm. and i'm reading twilight and harry potter here like if you would have asked me at 20 like who the best authors in the world were i would have said nicholas sparks jk rowling and stephanie meyer <laughs> I mean, i'm dead serious like i was reading nicholas sparks books watching the notebook sad sad for you <laughs> i'm i'm literally like in my room 19 years old reading the twilight books while listening to secondhand serenade at the same time <laughs> And I was convinced mm-hmm. that the that the lead singer of Secondhand Serenade, I think there's just one guy anyway, was also like I, I was convinced at the time that he wrote all of his songs about the Twilight series. Like that's how accurate some of the lyrics were. I think all of Evanescence was about the second or the uh, the Twilight. See, series. maybe it's just because it came out around the same time. I associate them. I'm not. I sure. I don't know what it was, but I'm just sitting there like tonight will be the night that I will fall for you. And I was like, it's Edward singing to her. Oh my gosh. That's me. And then I like had a crush and I'd like send her like the second hand Serenade song and I'd be like, oh my gosh, that was me. I know. Cringy. I would like change the MySpace (laughs) profile song to the song of the girl I liked. Gross. What? It worked. Jody? (laughs) No, not Jody. That was way pre Jody. So then it didn't work. Well, I mean, we went on dates. Okay. We dated. Yeah. Do you want to okay. give a you want to give a summary of the Twilight series? I feel like faster do. than Jason Kelsey did it on their podcast. Oh wait, I didn't see that. How? What did oh he say? Oh my gosh, he just like he kept going, and then Travis takes off the helm the earbuds. He's like, I'm not listening to this. It was hilarious. <laughs> I don't think I could do as good a job as Kelsey then, to no, be honest. No, Jason Kelsey's hilarious. <laughs> um, I was team real quick. I was team Edward. What team were you? At the time, Jacob. Oh, <gasps> you were. Yeah, but you've met my husband. Yeah, he looks a lot like Jacob actually. Yeah, manly. Hairy, warm. strong. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. If he was going to be an animal, it would probably be a wolf. 100%. So, makes yeah. sense. Well, okay. So, the story is about uh, a girl and her dad. I've not seen the movies or read the books in, well, I'm 36. So, in, I mean, 18 years. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'll do my best unless you have notes. I 100% rewatched this for you. Oh, I did not because I could talk about it all day long. Let's go. But just getting it all in order, right? Yeah. So, okay. you have you have this female character whose Bella name Swan. is Bella. Mm-hmm. And she and her dad move. Nope. She moves in with her dad so her mom can go on the road with her stepdad. See. Minor league baseball player. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And she moves into what town? Jacksonville. Oh, I'm sorry. You mean the mom moves to Jacksonville. Yep. The uh, the Seattle Bella forks. Seattle in Seattle forks. Which which is in Seattle, which Washington. Is, no, it's not. Washington. 
It's in Washington. Seattle <laughs> is not all of Washington. It's a small town. Okay, hear me out. Hear it's me. very important that it is, is a small town. Is it a real town? town? Yes, it is a real town. So here's what you have to understand, it is, right? It is, Emo was John. literally chosen because it is the rainiest place in the United States. Yes, yes. I remember that was in the book, too. Yeah. They talk about it, yeah. how rainy it is. Yeah. And in my mind, that was me. I was like, I'm an emo kid. I want to be where the sun's not coming out. Like, I was all in on this, right? And so she goes to school. She's this, like, awkward teenager. What? Nothing. You're doing and great. And she falls in love with Edward, this vampire who lives with a bunch of other vampires. And they never really, well, they can be killed. But uh, they don't. They never age. And they're just stuck in the same spot forever. Um, and then she meets Jacob, who's a werewolf. And there's kind of like a weird little love triangle. Mm-hmm. This is true. That's it. Yeah, there's some vampire politics that come in uh, yeah. in, in there. There's like a, a vampire royal. Yeah, vampires. there's a vampire royalty that sort of becomes very important in the storyline. And it is worth noting that Edward Cullen and his family are a very special type of vampires. They don't eat human blood. They only eat the blood of animals. So they would call themselves vegetarian vampires, basically. Yes. So they're a more humane type of uh, vampire. There's some differences in what you would maybe understand vampires to be like. They don't go in the sun, not because they will die, but because they will glitter. They glittery. There you go. And uh, there you go. So mostly it's a teenage love story uh, from beginning to end. Four books. Baby, just say yes. <laughs> Taylor, save me. Okay. <clears throat> um, Twilight. <laughs> so, Is there for kid? What, what? What are your thoughts? No, I... I wait. I hate Twilight. I just don't like, I think Twilight, I liked it when I was younger. And now that I am an adult looking back on it, I think it caused so many problems in our society. Okay, go on. Because I will agree with you. At the time, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved Edward. I even thought Edward was like romantic in his gestures. (gasps) And then as I got older, well, and by the way, like, of course, sneaking into someone's room and watching them while they sleep at night is creepy. But because he's a a felony (laughs) is what it is. But because he's a vampire, it's a little romantic. But do you know what I mean? He he could break the rules because he's a vampire. So like he could be eating her and killing her. Instead, he's just making sure she's safe. Do you know how many <laughs> abusers go under the guise of I'm keeping you safe? Okay, so here's- Oh, you're 100% right. That's what I'm saying. But at the time when I was a kid, I was like, it makes sense. But no, you're right. It's super creepy. So, and all the guys in it are pretty bad. Terrible. Terrible human beings. So like <laughs> at the at the heart of it, at the bare minimum, this is a codependent teenage relationship. Okay. Like in the second movie, Edward leaves Bella for stupid reasons that don't make any sense in reality. But um, he he leaves and she is so depressed. She doesn't leave the house for according to what the movies and, and I think also the books show four months. She doesn't leave the house. She doesn't like bathe regularly. She's having screaming nightmares. Like her parents needed to put her in therapy and get her on lithium. Like there is something (laughs) wrong here. That should not be happening. So at a minimum, it is a massively codependent relationship. But then like the other behaviors that we all as a, as a, as a collective group of 20 something year old women who were reading this book and high school girls were reading this book, we all thought Edward was so romantic. This man was controlling to the nth degree. He followed her. He told her who she could and couldn't hang out with, even when she was, he was gone. He's appearing as like a, as like a vision. And he's like, don't go near those guys. You don't have anything to say, boy. You left. Get to stepping. Okay. I don't want to hear it. He says, at one point, I should make sure Bella gets something to eat. Bella is a grown up. Okay. She can feed herself. Get a grip, boyfriend. But then it gets weirder and weirder and grosser and gross. Like he starts telling her, you can't go home to Charlie because it's dangerous for Charlie if you go home. Oh, you're going to separate her from her friends now? Cool. That's what abusers do. They separate girls from their support okay, you're system. 100% right but wasn't it dangerous for for her to go home at one I mean kind of sort of like it was true you're right it's not like you, your your point is that a high schooler or a young adult reading that it's really dangerous because yeah they're looking at this think and thinking oh normal. he wants to protect you like there's a part in not, the yeah. third movie where she goes to go see Jacob who is her friend since she was a little kid she's known this kid guy forever he's a werewolf the werewolves exist to protect from vampires blah 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 it's a whole politics thing he, Edward, disconnects the battery in her car so she can't go see her childhood friend. Are you bleeping kidding me yeah, with it's that? Messed up. Like, it's messed up. Taylor no. Launer, by the way, Detroit Lions fan. Keep going. Yes, he is. Hi, Taylor. Um, anyway, Taylor Lautner's character is a, is a werewolf, werewolf, Jacob. Yeah. There's a part where they show, like, 
everybody's like, oh, he was the good guy in the whole thing. He gets up in a girl's face, in Alice's face, and is like, you don't want to make me mad. It's going to get really ugly. And there's a part where they show one of the other wolves who's got a wife, girlfriend, something, Emily, whose face has been clawed up because they they describe it as she was too close to Sam when he got mad. Yeah. Like, oh, good. So you should just keep loving the guy who ripped your face off? Yep, because you made him mad. Are you serious right now? So there's all, all of all of that. Yep. You can speak to that. I've been talking forever. I have so many more. No, problems. but you're doing great because like <laughs> these are things that like I didn't I think of now, of course. But when mm-hmm. I was reading at the time, I'm with you. Like I'm the perfect guinea pig for what you're talking about here because I read it. And again, I literally never took any of the stuff from Edward and been like, oh, I'm gonna do this. And, like I was never controlling, mostly because I was just too dumb. I think like I didn't care. Yeah. But but like I, when I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, look at this, so romantic. And it, it, this kind of stuff can really impact young people it just can i think of music and i've I've been saying this for years like i think music really impacts young people in a positive and or negative way depending on what it's used for right if you're 16 or 17 or 18 19 whatever whatever, underage and you want to go party you're not putting on like classical music right Right. you're going to turn up you're going to put on whatever's going to get you in the mood to go Mm -hmm. out and party that talks about partying so that you can go out and listen to it while you party the same kind of thing like we can be influenced and so it's important that you're bringing this stuff up at the time, I didn't realize that a lot of it was problematic. It was a little weird. Yeah. But he was a vampire, so that's just kind of how I wrote it off. I was like, oh, well, there's no real vampire, so then it's not a real thing. Um, but, man, like, I don't know. I thought it was pretty normal to to just, like, shut down and be in your house for three months after a relationship ended. No. Because that's what some characters do in books and movies that uh, – books I've read and movies I've watched. Yeah. Like Bella did. So I, I like that you're going on a rant. So I'm going to go even further with that. Yeah. Okay. When the books came out, it became kind of a whole thing that the the author, Stephanie Myers, like her religious um, beliefs were sort of called into question. She's a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Mormons, LDS, however you want to call that. Yeah. I think they prefer to be called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, and so she has this whole view of like um, of, of marriage being eternal. That was a whole thing that was coming up. And so from that, it becomes very evident that like turning Bella into a vampire, Edward says, oh, I'm only going to turn you after we get married. Like turning her became a a really loose metaphor for her virginity, 100%. Like you say you can you consummated a marriage, you consume a person. It's the same verb uh, that's there. So it's very clearly like a very thinly, um, thinly veiled metaphor, basically, for, for this whole virginity concept and sex in general. And so when they do get married and they end up getting pregnant and there's a very violent sex scenes when they get married in the book. And this is a young adult fiction book. Now, it's not pornographic, I wouldn't say, right. but it is pretty racy for a young adult book yeah. to talk about the bed being broken, the sheets being ripped apart, the cleaning woman thinks that he harmed her she's covered in bruises at the end of their wedding night so like this is a whole thing and i'm not sure if you know this but as a result of twilight twilight inspired some pretty interesting fan fiction which later became 50 shades of gray that's a that's serious yes 100 percent. i heard that i did not know that, that was true 50 shades of gray it stems from uh twilight fan fiction owing to those scenes in which edward violently consumes his bride basically yeah. and um i that's what i mean when i say that this shaped our culture hugely going forward because nowadays you'll find on book talk or um bookstagram or whatever lots and lots of reference or lots and lots of recommendations for fantasy horror smut books is what they're called smut is uh, this is not me being like provincial and using the word smut derogatorily that's what it's called by the people who are into it um, and, and so now there's this whole genre of women and young girls who are reading books by like Colleen Hoover that is full on pornographic yeah. at school. Like I've seen pictures of homeroom classes where the girls have their free reading book on their desk and it's Colleen Hoover. Like the, <laughs> you scroll through Instagram long enough and you're going to find recommendations for, um, you know, spicy books with discreet covers that kind of thing and i think that this has hugely impacted our society especially an entire generation of girls so you're saying twilight is like to this young generation what friends was to our generation yes twilight is brought an entire generation of millennials and older gen z women into pornographic content that is now taking over parts of their lives and changing their you know, images of their husbands, their expectations of of what should be allowed to happen to them. I mean, you can look at statistics on fightthenewdrug.org, but it's something like 70% of pornography depicts violence against women. Yeah. 
Yeah, so. that's messed up. You know what's messed up to you is that it really took a turn in that last book. Like it, yes. it was like oh, that part was almost not in anything. Mm-hmm. And then at the very end, you're kind of they're on this like island, and you're like, whoa, yeah, that's kind of weird. I'm maybe reading too much into it because it's a teenage thing, but they they're so concerned about her age. Like she as soon she as soon as she turns 18, she's worried that she's too old for Edward now. Now Edward is perpetually 17, but he's also 109, and he tells you that. <laughs> so like. If you're sitting there worried that you're no longer going to be 18 and you're putting out this pornographic stuff, it just, it feels, it feels like it's leading to something and I don't love it. Yeah. So what age would you recommend, uh, if any, anyone Uh, read or watch Twilight? Here's the thing. I'm not going to say don't read or watch it. I'm actually going to say 100% watch the movies with your daughter when she first has a a crush on the boy. The first boy she has a crush on that she's willing to tell you about that she wants to be her boyfriend. You're going to sit down. You're going to watch all the Twilight movies and you're going to talk about how this is not a healthy relationship. Here's all the red flags. We're going to go down through it. Don't find this sexy. That's that's what I would say. Whenever your kid has a crush (laughs) on somebody, watch Twilight. That's what I was going to say, that if you've got a son, right, and you just want them to be a good boyfriend one day, Mm -hmm. watch it with them and be like, this is not how you act. No, actually, I would just say don't. Uh, You say don't watch it. (laughs) Yeah, you just don't. You don't have to. You're not missing much. Uh, But I'm with you. If you're going to have these conversations, your idea is an awesome one. I did write in here like 17, 16, 17, 18, like, but I don't what? No, it's fine. You're surprised. Uh, No. You thought I was going to say younger. No, I thought you were going to say 16, 17, 18. Okay. But you realize that like by 16, parents don't really have a lot of control over what their kids are watching. Yes, I understand. Well, not my kids. Okay. Oh, this is nine. Let's just all. <laughs> if this podcast lasts for 10 years, the conversation is just going to get better gonna every, gonna single get every single I'm month. Every single month. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be so uh, old. I love it. Very okay. interesting. Very fascinating. I think important to keep in note, which you mentioned a little bit earlier, that the books were written for young adults. They were. Um, and most of the people who were consuming those books were in Grown high school. Women. Well, no, of course. But then there was also middle schoolers and high, high schoolers, schoolers when I was growing up who yeah. were reading them as well. Um, so it did, like you said, impacted a lot of different people. It was very much a romance novel for, for little girls that quickly escalated into Fifty Shades of Grey. And I just wanted it for me. It didn't for me. I just wanted to be super sad and listen to Secondhand Serenade. So sure. I turned out OK. Kind of. Kind of. Arguably. All right. Well, hey. If people liked this episode, where could they find more content? I know they liked it. They can give it five stars on isthisforkids.com. You can look at all the places where this is released audioly. Audioly? Audioly. Mm. Audiologically. Audiologically? I don't know. On audio. Go you to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and give us yes, a review. Yes, you can also check it out on YouTube where we have an awesome video. Give us a like, a subscribe, a share, and a comment. Uh-huh. We'd appreciate that. Ruby's trying to talk to people on Instagram. I, I want to build a community with you. We're going to talk about this. Yeah. Me Come too. Me. I will participate with Ruby. I'll tag him in if he doesn't. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we're looking forward to seeing you online outside the podcast. Yeah. There's just so much content for us to navigate as parents. I'm Jonathan Beard of Blovins. I'm Katie, Mrs. Ruby. Let us help you decide. Is this for kids? Is this for kids?